Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones and joining me is Cam Valentine. And today we're gonna be talking about Odyssey Multi-QX. So we have a variety of different sound systems in our building and we actually just added a new one to the classroom. So Cam, what is in this classroom? So we have a Denon AVR A1H that I just recently installed, got wired up and it's ready to go. And what we're using for speakers are the new definitive technology dimension towers. So this system is a 7.2 sound system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and utilize Multi-QX to uh, calibrate this system. We do wanna mention that there is a fee for this, like regular Odyssey that comes with our receivers is free. So you plug the microphone in, the, um, the Odyssey will run through the AVR for no cost. But there's people who want a little bit more flexibility. That's where the Odyssey app comes in. And then if you want even more capabilities, that's where the Odyssey Multi-QX software comes in. This software is for someone who really wants to dive into the capabilities of their AVR and make really fine adjustments. The first thing is where do you get the, the software? So if you go to the website, you'll see um, when you first go to odyssey.com, there's a couple of different options. There's the ability to get home or pro. So there's two different versions of this. So if I go to home and I hit try out, it will send you to the Microsoft store. This software happens to be free. However, you do have to purchase a license for each of your individual, each receiver. So if you have two receivers in your house and you want to utilize the software, the software is free, but the licenses are about 200 bucks a piece. So okay. you could download the license there. There's another section called Multi-QX Pro. And this is a different way that you get this license. You can buy licenses in groups. Most people, if you're a consumer, and you just want to do one license, then you would use the Microsoft Store and it would be linked to your email. But if you're a pro and you want to utilize Multi-QX to do multiple different systems, so say you do 10 systems a year, that's where you would purchase Multi-QX licenses. And of course, as you can see there, Cam, if you purchase licenses in bulk, you get a discount. You know what, if you buy 50 of them. Yep, the more licenses, the bigger the discount. Exactly, the more licenses, the bigger the discount. You buy 50 of them, hey, Odyssey will cut you a deal of, of 20%. Now, I have pro licenses, so I have a series of pro licenses, and we use one of the pro licenses for this particular room. There's two different versions of the software. If you are a consumer, you will download MultiQX as your software option, and you would have saw that on the Microsoft Store. If you are an installer, a dealer, then you would download the MultiQX Pro software, which is what we are using here, and then you would use one of your licenses. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go in and hit Create New Configuration. Alrighty, Create New Configuration. Make sure that your computer and your receiver are on the same network. If not, they will not show on screen. So okay. when you hit, hit refresh there, so when he hits refresh, there's nothing there because we are, our, my computer is probably on a different Wi-Fi network. So right now we are on SU Wi-Fi. All of the electronics are on Listening Master that are in this room. And now when I press scan, notice that multiple receivers are here. The question is, how would you find the proper AVR? If you look at them, they all have IP names on them, right? If you go and you hold the status button on the front of the AVR, it will give you its IP address. And once you have the IP address, then you can verify that IP address that you see on the AVR matches what is in the software. But because we pre-named it, it made it a lot easier. Remember, Cam, I had you rename everything, the yes. friendly name? The in friendly the name, system. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I had you label the one in this room, A1H Training. We actually have our, our theater, which has been calibrated, which has an AV10. We have a 4800 and Stagecoach, which is one of the, the white room that has all of the definitive yep. speakers. And we have the training one. So the one that we want to do today is the, the training room. Yep. So, so go ahead and hit sign in. Nope. Um, now it's going to ask me for something that you don't need to see, right? <laughs> If you can look now, you'll see that it says 
under here it says connect. Yes. Because I already purchased a license. So I already purchased a license earlier. We were doing a, a training session and I was showing people how to purchase a license. So we already did it. So basically, because I have, I have a pro um, account, when I sign in, it will show me how many licenses I have um, under my uh, catalog. Okay. And I had four or five. So I use one of them to um, sign in and activate on here. So let's go in here and hit connect. You heard the little click that tells you that they're communicating. Okay. Now we need to connect the microphone to the receiver. So now we're connected. Um, the microphone's plugged in. The software is connected. And you can see on the on screen of your display that it says Odyssey. First thing we got to do is we need to make sure that the proper speakers are set up. Okay. So if you look over on the right side, you will see that it has a list of channel lists connected to the AVR. You can either um, check or uncheck some of the boxes here, right? Why are some solid black and some are gray? Because you can't have backs without A's. So if I uncheck this, then that one becomes available. So now it says I have a five channel system. Okay. But if I have backs, I have to have gotcha. sides. I recommend is that you go into the receiver before you get started and make settings adjustments. Got so it. now go to the left side and go over to adjust sub levels. The first thing you need to do is adjust the subwoofer levels um, for the two subwoofers that are in the room. There's a green window that it recommends that you should be in. If you put it too okay. low, it'll have to boost it a lot. If, and you don't want to boost, boost is bad. If it's above that, it'll work. But the receiver will a lot of times have to attenuate or turn down the gain being sent to the subwoofers to make them play at reference level. And sometimes it'll turn it down so much that it's not enough signal to trigger the subwoofer. Ugh. So if you want the subwoofer to trigger all the time, come out of sleep when you want to, you kind of want it to be inside of that window. And now hit start. All right. Ooh. And as you can see, the level is too high. So go over to the subwoofer and turn it down there, Mr. Valentine. So as Cam walks back over, what he did was he went over to our big DN15 subwoofer, one of them, and he actually turned it down. Oh. So it's right about in, in the middle. So now, go try the other. All right, one. press and start. Right off the bat, we're running on the high side. Yeah, so the, the okay. second subwoofer is a little bit high. So why don't you turn that down about, I don't know, two or three clicks. Let's see where we're at. Okay, Cam, you can come back over. The chart is being populated. And as you can see, they don't, they're getting, the levels are about the same. They don't have to be exact. They just have to be around the same range. You don't want to have one subwoofer this high and the other subwoofer that at this range. Because what happens is both of them have different peaks and nulls that they're addressing, and you want them to be about the same level so they can cancel out each other's problems. So okay. if you can keep them about the same level, that is great. So now we know the subwoofers are set up. Now it's time to measure the room. So the first thing that I always recommend is you see it just says position number one. Okay. But you don't really know what that is. Oh. So I would just put center middle. This position is going to do a few things. It's going to um, run the tests to determine how big the speakers are. Okay. It's going to test the, the subs individually and then test them together. Mr. Valentine, why don't you press the button? Got it. Measure. All right, so, so Cam, now we've actually went through and we did our first position. So 
so we can look and we can see all of the different positions. Got You'll it. see that the blue is the position. The one above is called aggregate view. And as you add more positions, it'll show you the average okay. of what's going on. Go down right. to the second position. Okay. And label that right middle. What we're going to do is we're going to measure the right middle, and then we're going to measure a bunch of other, all the other positions, and then we will be back. So let's get started. So go ahead, Cam. We are back, and Cam and I have measured nine positions on the AVR. You'll see that we have. See, you even said nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, center, middle, right, middle, left, middle. Um, front center, right center, so you can see all of the different ones for all of the different channels. So it took about, what, 10, 15 minutes? About 10 minutes. To measure seven speakers in nine positions. Now, as you add more speakers, of course, the time is going to go up. So now we have this measurement of all these positions. And as I mentioned, um, each position, you can look at them one by one by one. You can even double click and zoom in to look at a position in hyper detail. Now that looks really bad or really crazy, but if you smooth it out, probably closer to something like that. And you can see I'm using the little slider that says data smoothing to do that. So I can look at each channel, or I can look at each speaker and each measurement position one by one by one. But the one that we're really looking at is kind of like, what does the overall room look like? That's why you take multiple measurements. You take multiple measurements in a room so you can get an understanding of the entire room because this is actually a classroom and this could be set up in classroom style or theater style and we just want to make sure that regardless of where you're sitting, it sounds halfway decent. Um, more subwoofers, of course, is going to even out your base. But I can look in here and I can see what's going on. And you'll notice that there's a lot of bass in this room. So if you look at the, as it starts to, if I smooth this out, if you look here, there's a lot of bass, especially at that 30 to 40 hertz um, through here. Why is there so much bass? Is because we have subwoofers in this room, and each of these dimension towers actually have powered subs into them, yes. or powered woofers built in. So of course, they are full range speakers. Based on these measurements, the system's going to build uh, recommend crossovers. And there's a difference between a large speaker and a full range speaker. Initially, when you looked at Odyssey, it would say whether your speaker was large or small, and it hurt a lot of people's feelings because their speakers <laughs> were big, but, but the system was telling you that they were small. Now, what it says is, are they full range or are they frequency limited? So here kind of shows you what it thinks you should roll off all of your stuff. So if you look over here, Cam, you'll see that um, under center, it says it should be crossed over around 60, right? The, the front, it says 20. The, re the, the surrounds, it says 20. The backs, it says 20. It says basically everything else in here could run full range if you want to. That is because we're using six towers with powered woofers in them. So most people are never going to get all of their speakers being able to play that low. But if we go back to this measurement, the rear, the surround speakers have a, tr even if you look at the surround back, there is a lot of bass back right. there at 20 hertz right. for the left surround back. That's yes. one of the reasons why I like DT, um, um, DT Towers is because of all of that extra capability there. So if a bomb goes off in the back of the room, the bomb goes off in the back of the room. So, so. that's only because we are running our Dimension Series tower speakers? Yes, okay. you'll n hardly ever see that much bass in a rear surround channel. So, so yes, yeah, so we okay. actually have bass all the way around. Okay. One of the benefits of this, by the way, is the fact that we're trying to have even bass, and most people have two subwoofers doing all the bass. Yes. In this room, we have two dedicated subwoofers plus six speakers six, with powered yeah. sub bass drivers in them that act like subwoofers, so your, your bass is pretty smooth throughout the entire room. So now we go back to this target curve. So now we go back to the target curve, right? And this is where if you wanted to go in and modify it, you can. Okay. Why modify it? Well, you want to go, sometimes what it'll do is it will um, make your frequency response perfectly flat. 
but we saw how much bass is in the room, and half the time people want all of that bass. So this will allow you to go in and add um, and make adjustments. So, okay. so the first thing is you can d determine where do you want those adjustments to go. Do you want there's two curves that Odyssey will put into a receiver once it's done. A reference curve um, that has kind of that high frequency roll off at the top, which is what you'll see here, this little high frequency roll off at the top, Got and it. a flat curve that is just flat all the way through. So you can see here on these drawings, down here, the one that rolls off is the reference. The, one, the red line that goes straight is the flat. Oh, okay. And you go, well, well, well why would I roll it off? A lot of times oh. this roll off um, uh, makes it less harsh, allows you to play it louder, um, and it still seems smooth. Okay. If you don't like it, you can switch between flat and reference, but most of the time we do that, people say that they like the, the reference. So that's the one that I normally use and I normally recommend. Gotcha. So meaning they're choosing the reference that has the roll off roll off versus flat, yeah, which keeps it flat all the yeah, way across. Yeah, most people prefer it, it sounds Most better. people prefer it. Okay. Under here, it says I have this mid-range compensation. Now I could turn that off, and if I turn that off, you'll look down here, you'll see that those little the little dips, you'll see right here that the little dips go away. If I turn it back on, you'll see that the dip comes in. Okay. And I've heard people go, well, I don't, how do I want that? That's not what this, the speaker should be flat. Well, one of the benefits of having this software program is we can go back under the measurement and look at the speaker. There's dips actually built into these speakers. So you see that dip right here? Yes. This speaker most likely has a little bit of mid-range compensation. So because of it already came out of the factory, with this dip in it, you can see it right here. Why would I take that out? You see it? Yes. Okay. So this dip is right around where this mid-range compensation dip is. So you can take it out, but I will tell you that most speakers that we've tested, when we measure it, you'll see that it actually is there. Okay. So we're going to leave that there. All right. Now the next thing you can do is you say, well, there's a lot of bass. We look back at those pictures, right? There was a ton of bass here. It's flat, right, yes. in the base, but we have all this base sitting here. Uh -huh. We want that, right? So that's where you can go back in here and build a target curve. So hit that little plus button right there. So add new tab. Add new tab. Okay, and pick the one that says quad and the one above right there. Click that. Bi quad. Bi quad. Parametric. Yes. Okay. What that means is I want to build a little EQ, right? So now this is the points. Oh, okay. So say we want this to be the center of this to be at 40, right? And then I want to boost that 8 dB. And then, so now I got this little boost, right? But I want to do it a little different. See, it says peaking. Click, drop that down. All right, so I'm in the settings. Yes. I'm doing the drop down tab. And then go to a low shelf, no cue. Yes. Got it. Okay, so now what it's saying is at 40 hertz, start climbing. So, so I can say, well, so as you get deeper, at 40 hertz, I want you to climb and add bait, eight, up to 8 dB bass as you go to it until it rolls off. Now I can actually, if I want to make that 50, type in 50. So what I'm typing in here for frequency, that's where the midpoint? That's where it starts Between to, the two? That's where it just starts to climb. Where it starts to climb. You see okay. that? So now I'm saying that, hey, on, um, on this speaker, I want this. Now the question is, do you want it to be all the speakers or some of the speakers? You don't want to do that for the center oh, channel, gotcha. right? So what you could do is you can uncheck all. Uncheck all, so channels, take that And then off. check the front. Then I want that on the front. The surrounds. I want that on my surround. And you want that on your subs. So if you wanted to, you could build a curve for your fronts. You can hit plus and build a curb oh, okay. for your surrounds, and you can hit plus and hit a oh, curb wow. for your for your subwoofers you want. Got but it. based on what I'm seeing, it's a good chance that that's good. So why don't we start off with a gain of six instead? So why don't you toss six? All right, we're gonna change that to 6.0. Okay. And so, from that. So what we're saying now is all the speakers that I have checked, the fronts, the surrounds, and the surround backs, and the subwoofers, put six, make it 60 be above above flat because people like bass and the speakers could do it right now the next thing so scroll down at the bottom there All right yes. now there's a button here that you'll see it says uh, disable auto leveling what this is 
is you just told it that you want the difference between um, to be 6 dB. So what it does, it gives you a 6 dB difference by making everything that's flat quieter. So go in and check that auto -disabl disabling box. Just on the subwoofer uh, or all We're of gonna them? do it all, but let's do this first one. Okay, subwoofer. Now when you click on that, you'll see it gives you a warning. Oh, target that's curve it. auto leveling override warning. Yes, you say, hey, I wanna boost this thing by 6 dB. It thinks, oh, to be safe, you want a 6 dB difference between the high frequencies and the low frequencies. So what I'll do is I'll lower the volume of the, low of the high frequencies so there's a 6 dB difference. You're saying, no, I want the high frequencies to be the same volume, and I want you to boost Got the it. low frequencies. Now, if you do that, and your speaker can't handle that, you, you could damage your speakers, <laughs> right? Because you're trying, you know, so it's saying basically, are you sure that you actually want to do this? Got so it. when I hit OK, it'll say, fine, I will boost that by 6 dB. So it's going to say, OK, um, based on your request, I am going to build you what are called filters, which is going to be the next one. Okay. And that filter is not really an EQ setting. You're not adjusting an EQ when you do this. What you're doing is you're making requests for what you want this speaker mm. to do. I want to roll off by this much. I want a mid-range compensation on all of my speakers, and I want the bass boosted starting at around 50 hertz. So I Got make it. the request, then the system will build what are called filters, digital filters, in order to achieve that goal. If you go to number five there, young man. All right, number five, filter settings. And what it's going to do is it's going to build you the filters based on your requests. Okay. Now, we tell you that you never want to boost your signals. You always want to cut. And if you look here, the yellow, the middle one, is the, the frequency response after we do everything, right? Okay. The purple is how much adjustment it has to make, and the green is how much was there before. Now we boosted this thing 6 dB, and if you look, it still has to turn down the bass in this room. So for the fronts, there's way more bass we can add there. Absolutely. Okay. The center channel, it has no problems playing down to the frequency that we want. Basically, you're trying to keep this purple below the line, not way above the line. If it's above zero, you're adding, you're boosting the signal. Got it. If it's below zero, you're cutting the signal. Cutting the signal is good because you're not, you have to worry about overdriving anything. You're asking the speaker to do less. What I'm doing here is I'm saying, I know you could do more, but I want you to turn yourself down. Okay. Okay? If it's above this line, it says, I want you to turn, I want you to do more than what you naturally want to do. Okay. So naturally, it wants to go to green. But I'm saying I don't need that much. Every single one of these speakers is not, oh, yeah. <laughs> is not, is not boosted, right? Yep. All the way through. Let's go back in here and just for giggles, let's make this for everything but the subwoofers, right? Because we have so much extra power. Okay. And let's add an extra 8 dB. Now I can go in here and say, well, I want another one just for the subwoofers. And I want the subwoofers to be same thing, but I want them to be at 6 dB. Okay. Okay. And we want this frequency to be 50. The cool thing about this is you can make multiple um, uh, files, save them, and then play one and then load, then make another adjustment, and then load that file and play that one and pick the one that you want. You could also load one in the speaker preset number one and, a, and another option in the speaker preset number two and quickly switch between the two to pick the one that you like best. Now we're saying that the subwoofers, 50 hertz, boost them at six, 6 dB. The main speakers would have those big speaker subwoofers in them or big bass in them, boost those by 8 dB. Got it. All right. So now it'll redo those filters again. Okay. And when I look at the filters, you'll see that I'm still fine for every speaker that I have. I'm still cutting. Still cutting. Still cutting all the way through. <laughs> of course, you could also go to the dimension towers and turn down their powered sub. So if you look at this, say, wow, this is still way too much bass for me. 
I can go over after this and turn those subwoofers down Got it. On, on the speakers. Okay. But if I turn it down on the subwoofer, I need to remeasure. Gotcha. Okay, so you now, guys get that, right? Gonna be if off. I turn it down on the subwoofer, I need to remeasure because this adjustment is being done based on how that speaker is set right now. Got it. So if I turn the sub down, I have to go back into the measurements and remeasure that, that speaker. Got it. When you use the Odyssey built into the receiver, if you wanna, if you make a mistake, you need to measure one seat mm -hmm. and one speaker, you gotta do the whole thing over again. Right. The benefit of this is if I wanted to, I can just remeasure this speaker if I wanted to. I can delete it and then remeasure it. We had problems with the subs, actually, right. and we couldn't figure out why one sub sounded different than another when we, when we were doing this, so we kept running the subs over and over again until we realized that one sub was, the crossover was set for LFE pass-through, and the other one was crossed over, and the system didn't like it, so we could adjust that. But we didn't have to run every single position right. over and over and over again. The next thing is all of the other settings. This will show you things such as the distances and the trims. Um, are you boosting the signal? Are you not boosting the signal? And stuff like that. When you look at these um, trims, you will see that they're often all minuses. And that's because the receiver is either going to turn your speakers up, the, the, the output up, or turn your channel levels down to make it so when you turn your volume knob, on that receiver to zero, mm -hmm. it's reference level. It's, it's the volume that it would be if you're listening to that movie in a movie theater. Okay. If your speaker is super efficient, it may make all of these minus. It may make all of the channels minus. If they're um, not very efficient, it may boost them. This is a big room. We placed the microphone a little bit towards the front of the room instead of dead center. Gotcha. If I had placed it dead center, Probably the fronts and the rears would probably be closer together. Okay. Okay. But this is placed a little bit to the front, and because it's placed a little bit to the front, and we have bigger towers in the front than we do in the yeah. back, the levels are higher. Got it. All right. So you could change those. If we say to leave them alone. Oh, by the way, people go, well, why are these distances <laughs> different than what I'm, what I actually am measuring? Based on the time it takes for the signal to hit the microphone, it comes up with a distance based on its perceived speed of sound. Not physical distance, acoustic acoustical distance. Yeah, exactly. We just want all the speakers to hit your ears at the same time. Right. That's <laughs> it. And, and, and the system needs to know that the fronts are twice as close to the microphone than the backs. And based on that, I want you to delay it a certain amount of percentage of time to ensure that the sound hits you at the same time. Yeah. Um, the other thing you have here, do you want it to determine the crossover points or do you want to do it? So right now, if I, it's saying that these are the detected crossover points. All these speakers can play full range. Yes, they can. Yes. And except for the center channel, oh. which it recommends you cross over at 50, which is fine because it's a fairly big center channel. Got it. And then, of course, um, base management. What are you going to cross things over and everything else? So this is saying everything is large, 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 and we're going to roll them off at 40, 40, 40, except for that one, which is 60. The and then center, we, and then we're going to send small. Everything, and then we're going to send everything else to the base. Okay. Now I can go in here and I can I can adjust all of those, but no no reason yeah, to. Yeah. Why? Okay. All right. So now since I have all of my adjustments, all right. There's a couple of things. This is going to be off, which means it'll load it, but it won't turn it on. Got it. So we say I want to turn on okay. and, the, and I oh. want it to be referenced, right? Okay. The reference version. You'll see that there's also one yeah, there's that you can bypass it for stereo. People go, I don't want any of that stuff going on when I play stereo. You could bypass it and have it just play flat, reference, or don't do any equalization when I play back stereo. So bypass LR, is that automatically going to bypass just when you go to two no, channel? You have to, no, it's or all, you, have have to, to... you have to go into the receiver and change it. Now, there'll be settings in a receiver to do that. It's just like, okay. what do you want to start from? Okay. All of these to be in here, right? Got it. Dynamic volume, we want that disabled. Uh, Dynamic EQ is that thing where it actually adds bass and um, uh, if you're not playing it at reference level. Remember I was telling you that reference level is zero? Oh, gotcha. Okay. And so it says apply a little bit of boost um, to the bass and the high frequencies to give it more impact at okay. volumes below reference level. Gotcha. I can go in and change that level oh, wow. as much as I, um, if I want to. Got it. I'd say in this room, we probably don't need that, right? Got it. Low frequency containment is that thing that uh, keeps the bass from going through walls. Going through walls, kind of like a, like a nighttime mode. Exactly. 
So now what we need to do is transfer the filter. Okay. And what it's doing now is it's actually going to transfer the filter to the AVR. So you'll see now it's actually it's going through and it's transferring and sending the filter over to the receiver. Finalizing. Okay, Quick, I heard so it. as you can see, it is complete and the receiver is now back and ready to go. So what Cam and I are going to do is we're gonna actually play this and make sure it sounds really good. Because one thing we tell people is you can make all the adjustments in the world, but, but you need to listen to it and make sure it's doing what you want it to do. And you may decide you want more bass, less bass, or you may want to decide you want to do some more configurations. Okay. I, incur I, I tell people to start off at medium volumes and then work their way up into like, you know, higher volumes, minus two, minus three, minus zero, with more demanding content to make sure that when you make these adjustments, you're not going to clip something. Oh, Remember, smart. you're saying yeah, I'm boosting absolutely. everything, and then you're playing John Wick or King Kong, right. and then you realize that, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have turned it up that much. So what Cam and I are going to do now is we're going to actually go in and play it, and then we will be back. So we actually went in, and okay. we God. tested the, the system. It's good, but we still aren't getting the, no, as much bass as we would like. So okay. what we were doing is we were looking at these filter results. And you can see there's still a lot of bass that we're not utilizing. Right. It starts to run out of gas right around um, 30. You start getting this ramp. That means it starts to have to start applying boost to try to make up for the frequencies that it can't make. Got it. So that's why you see these big ski ramps here. And all of these the ski, ski ramps, ramps are happening right around 30, because that's where the, the, the system is rolling off. So you can see them on all of these. You see that? Yeah, 30, absolutely. 30, 30. That's the nice thing about having these actual charts. So what we're going to do is we still want this boost in the lower frequencies for larger speakers. Let's start that at 60, all right? Okay. And then what we're going to do is we'll say, instead of playing all the way down to 20, play down to 30. Okay. And after 30, roll off. So I can go back in here and hit override, and I can type in 30. Come on, there we go, 20, 30. And then the surround, auto, override, 30. Now you notice that 80 gets flat because the boost that we put in it doesn't start <laughs> at that level. So as we start it. adding it in, you can see. So we're saying roll it off, put it in there, but roll it off at about 30. So what we did was I turned it up more from 6 dB to 12 dB because there's a lot of leftover bass here. And if you look, we're still not boosting it. and the green was before, and the yellow is after, so we're still turning down the bass, but we have a lot more of a bump. People would sometimes hear Odyssey and they go, oh, when you run Odyssey, there's no bass, because it tries to flatten the frequency response to reference, and many of us like the room gain, the extra bass you get when you put a, a speaker like this into a room. Yeah, so totally. when you run Odyssey, you had all this room gain, and all of a sudden it's not there. So by using either that phone app, for 20 bucks or a more precise tool like this tool here you can go back in and build target curves so now we're going to go back in and we're going to reload these particular filters so we reconnect to the receiver and now we can transfer the new filter in okay to the same spot so I never saw a and save Now see here it anything. says, where do you want to save uh, your filter? Like, do you want, you to, want to save it in preset number one for right now. But we could have had the before one in, in one and the second one that we just did in another. Gotcha. And they kind of do like A, B comparison if exactly. we wanted to. Exactly. So now it's calculating all of the different filters and it's making its transfer to the AVR. Got so it. now we're going to give it another shot and see if we like it better. So we will be back. So Cam and I actually went back in using the new curve, that the new target curves that we added, and um, they sound uh, noticeably better. So a little bit more bass, a little bit fuller. There was enough bass in this room that even by adding 12 dB back, we didn't have to boost the signal. It's still less than what was in the room to begin with. I think it right now it sounds it sounds pretty pretty. I good. think it sounds great. So between 
the multi-QX software program and building custom curves, we end up with a pretty good space. Yeah. So hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about the multi-QX and the benefits of it. It's a great tool. So take care and we shall talk to you soon.